And now it's time to implement everything we've learned in the four previous videos into one. And this is our raw live trading session. What's going on guys? Congratulations in making it to the final part of this four part series. I really hope that you're excited to be able to get a taste of what my Learn Plan Profit team get to experience every single day. So you're gonna be able to watch my entries, my exits, hear my thought process, and even see me being challenged by the market and getting ready to cut losses. Again, these live trading sessions are exclusive to our LPP team. So if you like what you see, the first link in the description down below is available if you want to be able to sign up and be able to watch me trade live every single day. And we have a special discount linked down below for you. I hope that you learned something new and sit back and enjoy. It looks like NASDAQ is still trying to identify its true direction when looking at this on the one minute or the five minute. I mean, all of it looks pretty bearish as of right now when looking at this on the four hour. NASDAQ is still consolidating. Uh, you can see that it's not really forming higher highs. It's definitely not forming lower lows just yet on the one hour as well. Um, we are breaking below the moving average, but again, this can all change. Technical analysis can only go so far, especially when fundamentals are gonna be put into place. Today, we have the FOMC decision, FOMC rate hike or rate pause, depending on what the Federal Reserve uh, chooses. Uh, and that's going to be in the next three hours and 17 minutes. I will be live streaming that on the YouTube channel. So please make sure that you guys are subscribed so you get notified when it is that we go live. When it comes down to economic reports released this morning, we have the MBA Mortgage Application Index that came in a little bit lower than what it did last time, came coming in at negative 1.8%. And new home sales surprisingly coming in lower than expected at 697,000 when the expectation was 722,000. Uh, and again, the only thing that we are waiting to see is the FOMC rate decision. The expectation is pretty high that the Federal Reserve is going to be raising interest rates. And then Jerome Powell, 30 minutes after that rate hike, uh, should be giving a speech to kind of answer some questions. Um, but yeah, I mean, only time will tell. As of right now, it's looking a little bit more on the bearish side. Uh, I do have an open position on SQQQ. Like I told you guys yesterday, I left an open position and I've added more to it uh, during the pre-market and during normal market hours. Um, and it's gonna be really fun to see which way the market actually ends up going. So. So how many hours you got towards the PPL? I think I only have like six or seven hours. It's actually not too many. And there it goes. We have our first buy signal on the one minute time frame for SQQQ. Looks like NASDAQ and this is on the five minute. I have it on my second screen back here. It looks like we are forming lower lows. So I'm gonna add more to SQQQ. Direction is in my favor. Confirmation, right? This is confirmation of higher highs and higher lows. And then I'm managing my position size by adding more when direction is favorable. Those are my three main focuses. Again, it doesn't guarantee me that I'm gonna walk away in the green, but it's just, again, a little bit of a, I would say just making sure that the trade and the opportunity align with my criteria to try to avoid to the best of my ability those bad trades or over trading, right? Um, that's all we can ever do. So there's still some form of risk management that we have to take place. If this thing ends up selling off, breaking below the moving average and forming lower lows and lower highs, then at that point, it's gonna be a break of pattern and I'm gonna have to hold myself accountable and cut losses on uh, SQQQ. But as of right now, we're looking just fine. One thing that I wanna show you that you can see back on over here is on the five minute, this descending lower high and lower low. So when asking the question, Ricky, you know, how is it that you feel so comfortable going into SQQQ? The way that I view this is that, again, the analogy that I like to give is imagine this as a wave, right? That's what I see the EMA line and the moving average as right now. The wave, as the patterns trade below the wave, the weight of the wave is going to bring you down into the water, right? So that's exactly what we see going on. Every time that it touches the wave, it gets rejected. It touches the EMA, gets rejected, gets rejected, gets rejected. The weight of the wave, again, the weight of the EMA, the weight of the moving average is acting as a resistance uh, or vice versa, right? When we're trading above, when the pattern is above the EMA line, it's like you're surfing on that wave, right? It bounces, it bounces, and it bounces. You're, you're skipping on that wave as you are trading above it but it's until you break below then again direction goes against you uh, one thing that i want to do better today is averaging out of my position 
at overbought levels or when there's no signs of a resistance for SQQQ. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a surprise to me if today it ends up being a little bit more on the choppy side leading up to the FOMC rate decision, right? Um, I mean, the, the probability for the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates is obviously very skewed. It's very high. Um, but nonetheless, anytime that there's some form of report, that there's some form of economic data, right, any form of news, brings volatility and volatility although can bring opportunity it also comes with an extra layer of risk right and it's just something to uh, look out for or at least be aware of as you can see we're kind of struggling to break above this like 1785 do you see that 1785 it looks like that's the last resistance that we've actually had here let me look at where we were at yesterday i mean when comparing this to yesterday's highs okay this is why it's important to pay attention to this Yesterday's highs pre-market were also, do you see this? We're also right around that 1785, 1790. Do you see that? Yesterday's resistance, 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 and then it was descending. It tried to pop off and only hit highs of about 1779. And then if we look at, uh, this was yesterday, which was Tuesday. If we look at Monday, this resistance that we're currently experiencing right now was an old support level, right? Old supports become new resistance when we trade below them and vice versa. If we break above a resistance, it then becomes a new support. And there it goes, testing 1785. So what I'm going to do is I have no reason to be super, super aggressive right now. So instead of averaging up, I'm actually going to begin to average out of my position. Again, please do not copy just because I'm choosing to play it safe does not mean that you need to. I'm just explaining to you my thought process behind the trade as we approach a specific range based off of yesterday being Tuesday and Monday that it struggled to break above, right? So if I told you, if I were to tell you that, hey, you know, when you cross the street, I crossed the street yesterday. And every time that I tried to cross the street, you know, this happened. And then the day before that, every time I try to cross the street, this happened. Does it mean that on Wednesday, the same thing is going to happen? No, but again, probabilities are pretty high and patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't always have to. So again, I'm just respecting previous resistance levels. And that is why I'm choosing to reduce the position size a little bit at these overbought levels. Just in case we do pull on back, I have more buying power to buy at oversold levels. Remember, the only people that freak out when the market pulls on back are those that did not prepare, right? Or vice versa. I mean, we are, I'm obviously making money as the market is selling off, right? So we got um, S, uh, NASDAQ selling off, but even vice versa. If, you're, if your trade ends up pulling back behind you, the only people that freak out are those that didn't prepare for that, right? And we should always be aware that the trade can always go against us. Here it goes, 1789. There it goes. Popping off once again, 1789, 1790. I'm going to reduce by another 7,500 shares. Just because I'm reducing does not mean that you need to. I'm just explaining to you my thought process, right? If we look at QQQ, do you guys see this behind me? I love how the market, the moment you showed up, I love how the moment you showed up, the market started doing something finally. <laughs> it, I mean, it looks like it took off, right? It, I mean, this is literally a textbook reversal. Is this not? This is like the, a perfect, I mean, I should screenshot this. This is a, I'm going to. This is like a textbook setup of a three stages of a reversal. Is it not? Is this not perfect? Right? Should this not be like a, this is as close to textbook as it gets. We become overbought, RSI. We pull on back, we validate, right? Rejection, lower lows, lower highs, consolidation, lack of progress, and then we get confirmation, right? We got that nice little buy signal bouncing off of that um, moving average, the EMA, we're actually indicating signs of an uptrend, and we go back to retest previous highs. 
Is that not a perfect three stages of a reversal? It's perfect, right? As close to perfect as it can get in the real world. If you look at QQQ, just like you can see behind me, we are going back to retest previous lows. So you can see right on over here, we are retesting previous lows, so we shall see. Uh, Ricky, when you reduce your position size, what is the percentage? Again, just because I reduce it. Sometimes I sell 75% in a lump sum. Today, because direction seems to be a little bit more favorable, I'm being less aggressive in selling it all at once. But it's, it's all about a volume, right? If I'm in a very risky trade and it becomes very overbought within a short period of time, I might, my why on why I'm locking in profits and being more aggressive with getting out completely, I might sell 100% of my position, but it's because the risk, right, is so much greater. With this, it looks like as of right now, direction is favorable. I mean, like market sentiment is favorable. We're, we're aligning with, you know, these indicators, previous highs, everything. Everything is like aligning very well. I don't feel like I need to be as aggressive uh, with my trading. Now, this doesn't mean that I can't justify selling, right, more of my position, uh, but it, I'm just explaining to you my why on, I mean, I don't normally average out super, like, little by little, right, as you can see that I'm doing right now, uh, but it, direction is so favorable for me right now. It looks like NASDAQ, as you can see back on over here, right, NASDAQ just made new lows on the day. So, by NASDAQ making new lows on the day, you could see that uh, does it have to continue to sell off? No, not necessarily. But again, market sentiment is favorable for the bears right now, right? Um, which means that I don't have to sell my entire position. There's nothing wrong with it. If you end up wanting to lock it in, even if market does continue to sell off and SQQ rises, I mean, you lock in profits when it makes the most sense to you. I'm just explaining to you my why on why I'm averaging out. I mean, when's the last time you've seen me average out in like four or five positions, right? Or four and five trades. I mean, I normally do it in one or two, right? I sell like maybe 75% and then I sell 25%. I normally just get out um, because let's be honest, direction has not been very favorable for SQQQ. But as of right now, it looks like market sentiment is favorable. You know, it's continuing to indicate signs of an uptrend. This thing is continuously selling off. So I'm not in such a rush to get out. I'm obviously respecting that it can pull back and this is why I'm reducing it. But it's more of that thought process. It's like, what... Am I, am I being aggressive or should I be? Am I being conservative or should I be? There's a why behind it, right? If I, if I was trading AMC and it shoots up and I'm long on it, I'm just because of what the stock is and how it trades, I probably wouldn't mind getting out all at once, right? If I'm trading Apple, uh, you know, SQQQ or QQQ, something a little bit that moves slower. Um, maybe I'm not in such a rush to get out. Uh, heads up, uh, we should be approaching that $18 resistance. If I remember correctly, that has been a common resistance range uh, for the past few days, right? Resistance, resistance, resistance. We've only broken above it for a very short period of time. So, I mean, now knowing that, what's the take here, right? Should I sell all of it? And until I get confirmation, then I can re-enter? Or do I take the risk and hold an open position, hoping that it continues to uptrend? This is only a decision that you can make. It depends on how aggressive you want to be. Um, I do not want to be um, that aggressive. I do not. I just don't care to. I'm going to go back to my 5,000 shares. I'm just gonna sell it here. Let's see, we're at 1794, 1795. All right, just sold at 1795. So I am back with my 5,000 shares. I'm leaving 5,000 shares open, which is about 80,000, right? 88,000, something like that. Um, <clears throat> market direction is still favorable. NASDAQ is still selling off, so I'm still gonna make a little bit of money as direction is in my favor, but I'm respecting, there it goes, look at that, $18, 18, beautiful. And it's like, oh my God, Ricky, you're such an idiot. Why'd you sell early? You know, you could have made even more money. You, you think I want to sell early if I knew that I could make, no, it's like, I'm just choosing to respect the market. Regardless of what my hopes or my desires or my emotions might be, I wanna respect the market more than I wanna believe that I'm better than it, right? Uh, I've been burned so many times by thinking that, oh no, you know, 
it has to break. It's going to take off right now, which I really hope it does. But I want to do it if I if I hope for something to happen. I want to do it in a calculated way, right? If something becomes more risky, what would you guys say, right? Uh, we talk about the volume bar, right? As we're approaching this previous resistance of eighteen dollars, and let's say that my total position size is you know ten thousand shares. As we get closer to that eighteen dollar resistance, based off previous patterns, the risk becomes greater and greater, right? Because it's not guaranteed that we're going to break above that eighteen dollar resistance. So a way to manage risk is to manage your position size, right? At that point, I can go from ten thousand shares to one thousand shares, so I can sell nine thousand of it. I can still have an open position, but I can respect the opportunity, but knowing that it's been rejected there. So again, I do it in a tasteful way. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, and here it goes, eighteen oh three. And we are up uh, 6K on the day. Wow, I did not know that it was, that was beautiful. That was a beautiful setup. Looks like, again, NASDAQ still selling off. And this is where we, I mean, not every day is like this, right? But direction is very, very favorable right now, to say the least, right? Direction is very favorable. Um, it's, direction is favorable, yeah. Hello? Ah. Wow. That was beautiful. Let me see. Oh no. Says I have no more storage. All right. Just wanted to get a nice little reel for the day. Wow, look at that. Higher highs and higher lows. Mark, uh, Ricky got his flying hours. Now it's the market's turn. I mean, I love this, right? Um, days like this, it, it really all comes down to the side that you choose to be in, right? Because you're either long or you're either short. And it's either you're having a super easy day, like I am myself, right? Like because direction is in my favor, I'm going with the current, right? Every analogy that we've used before. And I'm like on autopilot right now. I just need to respect how overbought we're becoming and I need to respect my position size, right? My take profits and all that stuff. I just want to take that into consideration, right? Uh, I'm going to sell another 2,500. Just again, the more overbought we become, the more that I'm choosing to respect it. Um, when it comes down to this, it's just, I mean, if I can choose, obviously, if we can choose Every day, what day or what setup we have present itself, I would say that today is, I mean, the most ideal day. Direction is favorable. It was a textbook setup on the three stages of reversal. We talk about that in the course. We talk about waiting for confirmation, averaging up, adding more to it. Literally everything that is that I did in this video. Um, and it's either you're with it or you're against it. And trust me, I'm not here to be like, look at me, look how freaking great I am. Um, you know, all of you that are against me or that traded you know, that went long, um, screw you. Heck no, dude. You know how many times I've been burned by this market by simply being on the wrong side? And it's a horrible feeling because it's such a simple mistake. You can, you can, you can try to overcomplicate it, but let's be honest. It, it literally comes down to, well, one of two things. You either held a position overnight or you tried to guess before confirmation, right? You tried to hope for something to happen. You chose a side and you were simply on the wrong side. And the worst thing that you can do then is either buy into the dip when obviously, and that's what I was doing yesterday for a little bit. And, and this is why I like reflecting this because I need you guys to know that you're not alone. I, I'm very grateful for my green day, but I will never bring others down unless you're an AMC bag holder, right? I'll bring you down. But other than that, for all of you guys, I don't care if you were in TQQQ, it's a crappy feeling. Like, let's be honest. And it all comes down to a very, very simple mistake. It's just direction was simply against you today. 
So what could you have done differently? We all know, right? You could have waited for confirmation, direction to be favorable, and then acted. Excuse me one sec. <sighs> ah, excuse me. Or if you did choose to go into TQQQ instead of adding into the dip, right? Trying to dollar cost average into it on the way down, you just hold yourself accountable and cut losses and accept a smaller loss. Remember, your job is not to avoid risk. Your job is to manage it. And that is another area where I need to get better in, right? I know that I manage my position size very well, but sometimes averaging down into a position just because you can or because you're really good at position size management doesn't mean that you need to. Sometimes just cutting losses and keep them keeping them small, although it might be a tough pill to swallow, you either lose $50 or $5,000 right? You're going to have to sell at one point or another. And this is one thing that I really wanted to preach to you guys from my experience. If you hesitate to cut losses, look at that dollar amount and then ask yourself, what if it gets twice as bad? What if it gets four times as bad? What if it gets 10 times as bad? Is that possible? Because it's always most likely possible. So when you are hesitant of like, holy crap, man, I'm down. I don't know what would be something that would correlate to your account value that you trade with of what you would be down. But you're like, I don't know if I want to cut losses. Obviously, there's a break of pattern. You know, if there's a reason why you should, but if you're like, man, I don't want to be down 300, ask yourself, what if that number, visualize it, if it was $600 in the red? What if it was $1,200 in the red? What if it was $3,400 in the red or 2,400, right? Compare it, $300 versus 2,400. Ah, uh, kind of easier to accept that, okay, it's just the bad trade. I'm just going to get out of it, right? That to me makes it easier. Th those mental, that mental warfare where you're like trying to sell it to yourself that like, hey, maybe this position isn't that bad. I'm just going to dollar cost average into it. Think about what you are doing. If, if that was someone that you are trying to teach, ask them or, or tell them, in your honest opinion, is that a positive habit to have? You are adding more money to something that is making you lose money. You understand the why in hopes that it recovers and then because you bought in lower, you can more quickly make your money. But what if it continues to go against you? We've seen those days where direction is just completely against you. And it's not that it's against you. It's just the market's either very bearish or very bullish. You were just simply caught on the wrong side. And it's always that simple, right? Let me, I, I know that I'm kind of like more preaching. This was just, this is just a simple, such a simple trade that I don't want to make it. I, wa I don't want to glorify it more than what it is. And it was just direction was favorable. I dollar cost average into it because I, you know, obviously we waited for that confirmation and market sentiment is in my favor. It's just the very ideal day for me and for bears, but it could have been the exact opposite. So everything that I'm talking about now, I know that I've been in that position where market's against me and that I have to accept that change of direction. But I think, I, I really hope that that visual point of that visual tip of when you're down a specific dollar amount and you're hesitant to cut losses. Maybe if you think if you were to be down twice, four times, or 10 times as much, maybe that can be the encouragement you need to visualize that number and be like, holy crap, I do not want to be down 2400 Being down $300 seems like a steal. Seems like okay. Keep my losses small. Remember, I'm not perfect. It's okay. I have more time to get better. This is all, this is only uh, encouragement. This is why you trade with less money. So it costs you less when you make mistakes. It all comes down to this, right? Everyone always, uh, people like to ask, Ricky, why do you try to encourage beginners to trade with a little bit of money? Because mistakes are going to be made. And mistakes in this market with real money cost real money. I don't, I don't know, like th this isn't a mistake in school where it's just, okay, you got a bad grade. Mistakes cost you money. So respect that. I don't care if you're worth a million dollars. I don't care if you're worth a hundred dollars. If you're learning how to do something, we all start at the same, right? Your focus should be in benefit of your future self. So why would you ever put yourself in a position where 
you're more likely to lose more money. Swallow that ego and let's focus on what's important and that's learning and understanding what we are doing to implement positive habits. I want you to be able to teach me what you are doing. Imagine that. Why are you averaging up? Why are you cutting losses? Why are you locking in profits? Why did you initiate that trade? You should be able to explain it to me. And not because you think or you hope, but why explain it to me? What indicator, what setup, what pattern? You don't have to be right. And you're going to be wrong probably 25, maybe 50% of the time. I don't care. Just manage that risk, right? We will be wrong. That's okay. Okay? Why are you scaling out? I explained why I was scaling out. Um, Because we're approaching a previous resistance range, right? I use the analogy that if, you know, based off of previous pattern, I believe this was Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. So we've had the same $18 resistance for quite some time. Again, the more you trade something, the more familiar you become with it. I knew that right away as we were approaching $18. That's a common resistance range. So because of that, as we approach a common resistance range, I can either try to hold and hope for something to happen. But obviously, as you approach a resistance, the risk becomes greater of it potentially getting rejected at that same previous resistance range. So that is why I'm choosing to reduce my position size. But just like I said, just because I choose to does not mean that you need to, right? I'm just explaining to you my why. 18 has been tough. I agree. I agree, Andrew. Is this my boy, Andrew Vega? Is this my my Gilbert homeboy? (laughs) Michael, you cracked me up. Yes, sir. Microsoft died. What's going on, homeboy? All right. Where are we at? Microsoft down 4.5%. And again, I mean, we have Meta reporting earnings today. Well, you know, Meta was trying to rip up yesterday. I'm pretty sure it's given back what it made yesterday. Yep, right back down to previous support. We will see if this trend continues. Google did break that trend, but I feel like Google was a little bit different because they had an executive change, right? Their CFO is now their CEO, all that good stuff. But Google did beat earnings, but we saw it with Microsoft. Microsoft beat earnings, but their guidance was off. Tesla beat earnings, but their guidance was off. Netflix beat earnings, but their guidance was off. American Airlines beat earnings, but their guidance is off. Microsoft's earnings were better, but you know guidance was off. Will Meta do the same? Will Amazon do the same? Will Apple do the same? We shall see. What's going on, Bill? Any discounts worth buying along here? That's for you to decide. Again, please do not ask me what or where you should buy. If you can't decide on your own, then again, you simply are not ready. Regardless of if you could or if you can't make money, you need to be able to identify the why behind it. So, And again, we have FOMC rate decision today, and we have Microsoft or we have Meta earnings. And remember, we still have Amazon and we still have uh, Apple to report earnings. So when asking that question, is it because you think that the market can't sell off more, right? But think about what's to come. FOMC rate decision and then big tech, the bigger tech companies, uh, Apple being the biggest, those still have to report earnings. So if you're asking the question, can the market get worse? Well, of course, right? Can it get better? Can it begin to get better? We'll see, right? But we still haven't even factored in. Um, I'm, I don't know if it's factored in yet, but I mean, they still have yet to report the FOMC rate decision. Are you streaming the FOMC? I am. I will be. FOMC, yeah. I mean, today's going to be a busy day. I actually don't even know if I have time to go to the gym right now. I normally go in between the sessions. Let's see. Two hours and 45 minutes. I still need to film a video. Rachel is sick. I need to check up on Remy. So in one hour, can I come back and add two hours? That's almost three hours. I should be able to. So I assume uh, Apple would take the market up. So I cut my ass, kick you, and break you. I regret so much if I felt that Apple was okay. 
Uh, it's up to you, right? You could always still wait for confirmation. It looks like market's oversold enough, so we might see a change of direction here. You know, we got QQQ beginning to show signs of a support. So last five trades of mine were all losses, but thank you. I managed my position size, cut losses, and was down only 2% combined. That's insane. That's good. But still, I've had to fix things that I'm doing wrong. I think the biggest thing with that is um, one thing that I've learned, and I learned this when I was learning how to box, um, and it, my coach, I just felt like, do you guys ever like a coach or someone like tells you something and you're like, this is like applicable to like other areas in life, right? So my coach, when he was telling me about boxing, he was like, great boxers or good boxers, um, good boxers make adjustments every time that they fight. So if I fight you and let's say I take a loss or I win, I make adjustments for my next fight, right? But he says the best boxers make adjustments round after round. I felt like that was really like, in, you know, applicable to kind of trading where it's like, yeah, good traders can kind of like after, day after day try to make, you know, these like micro adjustments for their next time that they trade the following day. But maybe amazing traders, right? We're not just limited to only taking one trade a day. But maybe every single time that you do trade, it's again asking yourself, what criteria was I following on that first trade that either led to my success or that you know didn't go according to plan? And what adjustments can I make so I don't make that same mistake or I try not to? It's not that it's 100% avoidable as nothing is, but you know what criteria can I follow that might be a little bit different? What can I tweak on this next trade maybe to wait a little bit more for confirmation, right? Do you guys get what I mean? It might make sense, might not, but um, I felt like it what really was applicable um, to trading as you know, um, you know these these adjustments that I would like to make upon myself as a trader, as an individual. You know, shouldn't be done just on a daily basis, but should be done every single time that I step up to the plate to try to open up a trade. Okay, yeah, Captain Games, clear as a bell. I like that. Are you learning how to drive a plane? Yeah, learning how to fly a plane, yeah. I am. Yeah, micro adjustments to trading, golden advice. I'm happy to hear that, Justin. And again, they're just little things that I learned that I was just like, you know, that, that would be some, anytime that I learned something, <laughs> Um, I get excited because I get to share it with you guys, right? Um, it might be applicable to some of you. It might not. But remember, those that implement it on a consistent basis are the ones that are going to see that end result. It's not just you try it out for a day or you try it out for a week or you try it out for a month. It has to be constant for a long period of time. So, um, yeah. And as of right now, it looks like market is trying to recover. So I'm happy that I averaged out most of my position. I do have 2,500 shares I should have. Yep, 2,500 shares left, uh, which is about 40K uh, left in this open position. It should be, right? 40? Where is it? Yeah, 44K, almost 45K. There it goes, 45K. Um, I'm up 6K on the day. Um, I have no reason. I mean, it hasn't pulled back enough that I want to average into it again, uh, but it's not pushing up enough. It's still testing that same resistance that I want to add more to it. So, um, as of right now, it's kind of just the waiting game for me, and I'm just going to kind of get started for my day. Um, you guys know exactly what my focus is. I either need this thing to pull back enough and see if we form another reversal here on SQQQ or if we end up changing direction, the same thing for TQs. But remember, in about three hours, a little bit less than three hours, the FOMC rate decision. So I'm not even in such a rush to take a new position. I, I kind of don't want to. I want to be very light. I want to wait for the market to react. I would like to be as cash as possible so I can enter when direction is clear. Instead of hoping for it to go according to plan, remember, what are we doing differently? These macro adjustments every single time that we trade, what can I do differently? Maybe instead of hoping for something to happen, I wait for it to happen, waiting for that confirmation, and then I strike, right? Um, all right. <sighs> all right. That's really just it for me today. So this thing's pulling on back. 
more it pulls back, the, the better price I can get it for. And I've sold most of my position. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this little uh, session. Please make sure that you prepare however it is that you want for this FOMC rate decision in two hours in less than uh, three hours. And um, that's going to be my main focus for the day. And then we have meta earnings after the market closes today. I do want to remind you again, if you guys have some time and you want to pick out some of your favorite teas, we got the Thrillionaire Elon Musk tea, the buy the F and dip. That's from Warren Buffett. And of course, the insider trader of the year. That's our girl, Nancy Pelosi. These are all available at shoptechbuds.com. You guys get 20% off everything on the site. By using promo code LPP at checkout, even if you just want your simple trading tee of the Wall Street or the bullish tee, these are all available and all applicable for 20% off. You guys can get your red trading journal just like mine and or mouse pad, wall art, whatever the case might be. It's all 20% off. Use promo code LPP at checkout. And again, that is the fourth link in the description down below. I appreciate your time. Hope that we're into thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and we'll see you guys in just a few hours for our FOMC live stream. So I hope that you enjoyed that live session. Again, if you have any questions before joining LPP, feel free to shoot me a direct message and that is the second link in the description down below. Again, if you're ready to join our LPP team to be able to watch me trade live as soon as the next day the market opens, the first link in the description down below is our biggest sale. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access, and yes, you'll get access to the A to Z video lesson library and being able to watch me trade live every single day. Excited to have you as a part of the team. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.